Howdy, I'm Sadie Mae with the Awesome Orange, and this week I have another awesome build for you. I'm gonna be transforming this white oak barnwood behind me into a floating media console. It's gonna be part modern, part rustic, and all parts awesome. Let's get started building. I got this barn wood from a friend. It is from a barn in Kentucky and it has a ton of character. He gave them to me because they were remnants from a different job, so they are all different lengths and thicknesses. So I took to finding the perfect pieces for this project, choosing boards of similar thicknesses and relatively flat and straight. Once I had those picked out, it was time to clean them up a bit before running them through my machines and milling. The main thing I'm looking for is any metal because metal and machines, blades, don't mix. And first step in milling was the jointer. Milling barn wood can be a little different than new wood in that it's less straight and to salvage some of that character and saw marks, I don't always face plane them completely flat just mostly. Then onto the thickness planer where I try to get the other side flat. And if I say try, I mean my lunchbox planer was really struggling with how dense and hard that this oak was. So I was taking super light passes and running the boards through so many times. So to give it its best chance, I decided to change the blades. This is a pretty easy process. You just open it up, unscrew the little guards, put in the new blades and reassemble. The holes in the guards line everything up for you so you don't have to worry about getting those blades lined up perfectly. And then it was back to planing. The new blades were so much better, but my planer was still struggling a bit. So I did end up ordering a new one with the helica head. I've been wanting to do this for a long while and this project was the final straw. Now that I could see what the boards look like, I started to kind of get an idea of design and layout that I wanted for the console. After several measurements, I decided that I wanted to have even vertical slats for the drawer fronts. So I laid out my cut marks around any imperfections in the wood. And then I got them cut up to length over at the miter saw. The next step in milling was ripping them to width at the table saw. And since I had so much trouble planing these, I figured it was time for a fresh blade, a blade that would work for all the steps of this build, ripping and cross cutting. So I'm testing out Freud's new 40 tooth combination blade. And you'll see later in this build that this cuts super smooth through the hard oak, giving a clean edge that I really didn't even need to sand. All right, with the new blade and the fence set to the proper width, it was time to start ripping each slat to two and a half inches wide. For the design, I thought the consistent widths would give it a more modern edge to the rustic wood.
Once all the pieces were ripped, I started laying them out to create a random color pattern and found some red oak mixed in with the white. And I'm not mad about it, just adds more character. Then to glue up, I was using my Cabinet Master Parallel Clamps from Pony Jorgensen. These are great because they apply equal pressure to both sides. Generally with glue ups, I face my finished sides up, but because this is barn wood and I couldn't mill it to 100% flat on both sides, I faced the finished edge down so it would be as flat as possible on the fronts of the boards when they're done. As you can see here, my shop's getting pretty crowded. I got a new bandsaw coming in and lots of other rearranging going on. So I had four total drawer fronts I was gluing up. I decided to split up the glue ups and do two at a time, just to save space and headaches. But I'm really excited for some new shop updates coming soon that I'll be able to share with you. That's just a quick reminder for all the behind the scenes on my shop and projects that I'm working on. Be sure to follow me over on my Instagram at the awesome orange. Okay, while those are drying, let me show you where this is going. This is our current setup. It has been really hard to decorate around these large speakers, so I finally talked my husband into moving them into his office. And then for the frame of the console, I'm gonna be using two of Ikea's best age units. The first one is a 70 inch TV unit, and I assembled it just like normal once I got that dang box open. If you've ever assembled any Ikea stuff, it's always a great idea to start. Make sure you got all your pieces and I do read the instructions and then start building. The Vesta unit comes with these metal L brackets that go on the back of it that you can put anchors through to secure the, um, the unit to the wall and have it floating without feet. It also comes with feet if you just wanna secure it directly to the ground as well. Or not secure it, just set it on the ground. <laughs> Once it was assembled, now it's time to hang it on the wall. And I'm using this big one and wanting to center it directly underneath the TV. So I'm installing this one first, and then I'll get the measurements for the second one that I'll be putting in. So as you can see, I'm measuring the TV, the unit, and against the wall of where I wanna put it. I'm using a little stool to help me adjust the height there. And then I did end up putting some cleats on the wall since I'm installing this myself to hold it in place as I secure using those L brackets on the back of the unit. Oh, and I got some help from Oscar too. All right, I got that first one installed, centered underneath the TV. And you can see here how it's secured using their hardware into anchors on the wall. And those cleats are still behind there into the studs as well. Now for the Ikea hack of this 
build. I had another um, cabinet that came into like 47 inches, but I didn't need it that long to go up against the, the wall. So I just held the pieces up there and marked a line of how and where I need to trim them. Then I took them to the miter saw station and trimmed them. You can see my miter saw station is gone. I told you there's some big changes coming to my shop. Then with those pieces trimmed, I went ahead and assembled the Ikea unit, the Besta unit, the same way as I did the other one, except on the end that I trimmed, I did have to drill a couple of new holes to accept those screw anchors, and I used the piece I cut off as a template for that. And there I am putting those into the new holes. And then just finish the assemble like normal and hang it up just like I did the last one. And then I got a lot more help from Oscar assembling some drawers. These are just the Ikea drawers for the Vesta unit. Just follow the instructions, super simple to put together. And with that part done, it was time to go back to the drawer fronts and cut them down to their final dimensions. The first step is I used a straight edge clamp to my workpiece, making sure everything was square. I trimmed off one of the rough edges. It was a little bumpy, so the circular saw, I had to be careful when I was going through it. And then with each of those one edge trimmed flush, I went ahead and ripped it a little bit wider than I needed at the table saw because the circular saw didn't give me a super clean cut. I wanted both sides to be clean. So the first cut at the table saw left me one clean edge, and then I flipped it over and then ran it through again at the final width that I needed for the drawer fronts, or height, I should say. Here I'm doing that. So both sides have a nice clean edge. Then to get the two sides completely square, parallel, all that good stuff to them, I'm using my crosscut jig on the circular saw. So I just take off one edge, make sure that one's clean, and then it does have a stop block on there. You can see here that I can I set up to the exact width that I needed and then trim those off. And it was time for sanding. I went through with 60 grit and then 120 grit and then 150 grit. I'm still not sure on the finish I want to use on these, so I'm staying at 150 in case I do want to use a Rubio Monocoat on these. For the edges, I just went ahead and did a light sand over to break over the sharp edges. Nothing fancy here. Once I was done with that initial sanding, there was a, light, a lot of compacted sawdust that I think was from like bugs that have previously lived in there. So I went through each piece and picked out all the sawdust or debris that was in there and a nylon brush and just got it super clean, as clean as I could. And then even washed the um, pieces of wood with some water, which is also gonna pop the grain on the wood. And so once I'm done super cleaning that, I will go back and sand it again for its final sand. Then to make these drawer fronts work with the Ikea Vesta unit, I went ahead and bought one of their drawer fronts and I'm using it as a template for the drill holes, to drill the holes. So I just lined it up, clamped everything down, drilled the holes in the exact position, and then I'm using the Vesta hardware to secure it to the unit. The oak is super hard, so I had to be careful not to strip the screws when I was screwing them in. I probably could have used a little bit bigger of a drilled uh, hole for it, but I decided it was working the way I was doing it, so I got them all in.
I just assembled them just like you would any other Ikea Besta unit. And since we trimmed this unit on the end, I decided just to use a blank cover over this piece and not use it as a drawer or a door or anything like that. So I just glued it in a couple of rad nails, it's completely hidden. So just like that, I have myself a floating media console. I absolutely love how this piece turned out. The barnwood gave me a little bit of hassle, but that combined with the Ikea hack made it overall a pretty simple project. Remember, this is where we started and this is where we're at now. I'd love to hear what you think about this build in the comments below. Thanks for watching and remember, build loud, build wild, and have an awesome day.